Hi, this is Russ with Devoted Golfer TV. We're at the 2016 PGA Merchandise Show, and I'm here with Chris Elson from Matrix. Hi, Russ. How are you? And I forgot your title, Chris. What do you do? President. Matrix? Oh, oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been at Matrix? I've been at Matrix for about five years. Yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. me a little of the history of Matrix. Sure. Um, Matrix started in 1993 under a, a former name, Apache Golf. Mm -hmm. um, in the early 2000s, when the company decided to get involved with the PGA Tour, mm -hmm. um, the company basically changed its name and has been Matrix uh, ever since and got more involved in actually manufacturing of products uh, both here as well as, uh, as well as overseas. And so our, our, our manufacturing base, if you will, of where we make products has mm -hmm. uh, expanded pretty substantially over the last 10, 15 years. So you're, you're one of those few shaft companies that manufacture the product. You just don't sub it out and have somebody else make it for you. That's right. Yeah, we're not an importer distributor. We're an actual manufacturer. And, and actually, uh, we, we take it to a little bit of a, of a next level. We're uh, somewhat vertically integrated. Um, so we actually produce our own prepreg, meaning we buy fiber and we actually produce our own prepreg, mix our own resin systems, combine mm -hmm. it with different fiber types. It mm -hmm. <coughs> allows us a little more flexibility in, in design and uh, in manufacturing as well. So, so I would guess that, that if you're making your own prepreg, mm -hmm. that you have the ability to make some high density materials and, and control the amount of resin content that you have. Yeah, it's 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 a nice um, it's a nice kind of uh, feather in our cap, so to speak, because most of most other shaft companies have to buy basically prepreg that is off the shelf, kind of your, your standard combinations of resin systems and, and fiber types. And we have mm -hmm. the ability to kind of tweak that, um, make kind of incremental changes to resin systems and incorporate them with different fiber types, which give us different material properties, which allow us to fine tune spec targets and make structures, whether it's for tour or for our aftermarket customers or our OEM customers that are maybe a little more fine tuned to a specific design concept. And where are you making shafts? We make shafts in, uh, actually, we still do make some shafts in our, in our corporate headquarters in Anaheim. Um, not, a, not a lot, but mm -hmm. some for, for mm -hmm. tour and some of our very high end products. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have uh, just opened a new manufacturing facility in, in Mexico. Um, we also make uh, shafts in, in southern China. Currently, we have two manufacturing facilities in China, but we're in the process of consolidating that down to one. Mm -hmm. um, it's in a town called Zhuhai, which is close to Hong Kong. Okay. Um, we actually produce shafts, uh, make our own decals, and make our own paint. Um, and that's where the prepreg manufacturing is done as well. So you don't have any campus. surprises when you're painting shafts that the paint's <laughs> a little too heavy or anything like that? <laughs> well, you know, yeah, paint is a funny thing because depending on what the color is, you, there's, there's a big difference. A, a gallon of uh, white paint weighs significantly more than a gallon of white or black paint, for example. It's, so it's kind of funny. So really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More pigment. Yes. More pigment. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and, and how much can that actually, ch that can change the weight of a shaft? Sure. Really. Uh, up to probably a couple of grams, yeah. which. You have a specific target you're going for and, and all of a sudden the paint comes in heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yes. Then, and there have been challenges with that in the past. <laughs> yeah, I've heard the story like, yeah. okay, we just got a batch of shafts and the paint's too heavy. That's right. Oops, we missed our target. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. People don't understand all the things that go into the making of a shaft. Yeah. So much of it is, is they, they don't understand how much of it is like hand handmade, like <coughs> ma making of a cigar. It's it's very true. Yeah. It's 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 very true. Um, it's a uh, you know it's it's a challenge, um, but an opportunity for us as well. You know the the different manufacturing techniques. Um, that we employ are actually a little bit different than most of our competitors. So, so to your point. Um, Explain that to me. Well, so we actually have uh, an automated manufacturing process, which reduces labor by up to about 80% compared to a standard manufacturing um, environment. Mm -hmm. And basically that, that allows us to, uh, to produce to tighter tolerances, mm -hmm. uh, more, more consistent, manufacturing um, and also it gives us 
uh, more flexibility in that we don't have to worry about some of the labor challenges that some of our uh, some of our other friends in, in the industry have to deal with in uh, in Asia. So yeah, you I mean somebody's been out drinking the night before and they don't <laughs> quite get that steam <laughs> laid down <laughs> in the right spot. Yeah, yeah well, actually. Uh, in, in Asia, you know, with, with all the holidays and whatnot um, mm -hmm. over there, there, there are challenges in, in labor retention, actually. Um, mm -hmm. so, so with really minimizing that and, and creating an environment where we can um, produce, a, produce a shaft that's um, almost entirely uh, automated, it, it really kind of minimizes the, the variables that are out of your control, which we like. Yeah. We like to be able yeah. to control the process. Um, so that as means much as possible. the product is more consistent. More consistent. Yeah. yeah. So as a fitter, I don't have to worry that the shaft that I that gets shipped into me is significantly different than the shaft I've been fitting with. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And and each of our shafts go through cer certainly a series of uh, of QC, actually automated uh, QC in process. So mm -hmm. each shaft can will measure um, deflection and of course weight and OD and straightness and, and all those things. And actually our, um, from an aftermarket perspective, we do all those things. And then with our OEM partners, they will kind of tell us what they want measured and we'll set up our manufacturing environment to, to Hit their targets. meet those requirements. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, new product this year. Yes, new product this year. Um, we're just introducing <coughs> a family of profiles called Speed Rules. Mm -hmm. um, launched them on tour towards the towards the end of last year. I've had some great success so far. We've had a few wins, which is which is great. Um, we're very grateful for that and, mm -hmm. and our tour team. Um, the Speed Rules family of of products um, is comprised of three different profiles, and uh, very different from our MFS line of products, our people more commonly know them as our white, uh, red, and black tie products. These things here. Yeah, Those yeah. things here, yes. So these are, these are products that fitters can uh, basically fit by launch. So yeah. white tie is high launching profile, right. red tie mid launching, black tie low launching. The speed so, rules. So I can relate that back to your paint rules, right? <laughs> yes. More paint, metal paint. Light, yes, light yes. Paint. Yeah, you, yeah. you certainly could. Yeah. Absolutely. We could, Absolutely. but that's not. But right. I, you know, it, it's a great way for a fitter to remember that that the white is the highest, the red is the mid. So as the color gets darker, it gets closer to the ground. This is true. Yeah. This is true. And yeah. we, we're trying to simplify the, the model. You know, uh, Matrix is a company has always made great products. Um, in the past, there have perhaps been some, some challenges in terms of uh, uh, product confusion and, and how products are, are segmented and really what their intent is. And so mm -hmm. this was really our, our first intent or attempt mm -hmm. at, uh, at kind of simplifying the equation to, to make it easy for, for people to remember fitters, consumers, our customers that you know white, red, black, high, mid, low. It's, yeah, it's yeah. about as simple as it can be. As yeah. it can be. So, so now we drop our color codes here. Yes. In, in a sense, I mean, we're not looking at white, red, black anymore. We're not. We're yeah. not. Very different. So, so speed rules is the the real, the two main tenets of the of of the brand are speed optimization um, mm -hmm. and fit by feel as opposed to to fit by launch. Okay. So, um, there are. Uh, three different profiles, as I mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. So the A type, B type, and C type. Okay. You're holding a black and a red shaft there. Mm -hmm. All three pro profiles are actually available in both colors. So um, I can pick which color I want. Yes, but between the three different profile types, um, between A, B, and C, so they're, they're, they're designed for three very different uh, feel or, or swing types. Let's, let's start with A, what am I, sure. who am I fitting to an A? So, so an A-type player would be someone probably with a more tempoed or smoother swing, mm -hmm. um, perhaps somebody that needs a little help who's in kind of the, the lower end or, or slower swing speed type. It's, mm -hmm. a, fairly, it's a fairly smooth profile. Um, torsionally, it's, it's fairly tight in, in the tip section, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly feels it uh, feels very good for somebody who's got a uh, maybe a longer or more smoother tempoed swing um, with in, in a slower swing speed. Um, so if you go tight on torsion, 
that you know that makes a shaft feel somewhat clicky as opposed to well so it's buddy yeah. sure Boom. this is true yeah. and, and it's balanced by uh, softer uh, kind of flexurally type type profile so mm -hmm. it is even though it's a little tighter torsionally it's balanced by kind of a, a softer flexural stiffness Th does the density of of the pre-prag mm -hmm. effect feel to the point where you can have a a tight torque shaft but it doesn't feel like it yeah um, and in fact uh, one of the things that all three of the of the profiles in speed rules share um, are mat is material that is very high modulus very high fiber content lower resin content material mm -hmm. that torsionally is very stable but still allows for you know, it's hard to quantify feel, certainly, but yeah. um, but it but, doesn't. But what, but but when you feel those two, side by side, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the high density materials always, it, it, they just kind of dampen the vibration coming up the shaft. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, absolutely. and it's a completely different feel when. You it's it's a very different feel. Yeah. It's a very I know when feel. I have high density product in my hand. Yes. Absolutely. I know that feel. Yeah, yeah. And, and we find that w we actually have more success um, on tour with that, with that, typically with that type of material as well. Yeah. Um, not, not for everyone, but mm -hmm. as, a, as a general rule. Yeah. For sure. And so making your own products, I see some, I see some interesting. Yes. Uh, there's actually an interesting feel in here. Yes. So that, that's not just a, uh, a cosmetic. That actually is real um, material. We call it Mongza. It's an aerospace grade um, woven material that we, uh, that we basically incorporate here in the butt section. It, it, it adds strength, hoop strength, in mm -hmm. essence, to the, to the product to stabilize it um, mm -hmm. in, in this section. So it's woven. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, it's laid down cross-sectionally. Mm -hmm. um, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fiber that's kind of laid down yeah. um, cross sectionally. What does that bring to the party for the golfer? Uh, stability through this section. So um, these structures, you, some folks may be familiar with our with our HD uh, sixteen sided um, mandrel. Mm -hmm. This this in a way kind of does a similar thing to that. It it adds stability throughout the throughout the butt section. So you're gonna um, get a nice balance. Um, uh, of of feel and stability throughout the uh, throughout the profile. Basically. So, so I'm tempted to hold this up to the light and look <laughs> at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you ha do. do I have the 16 sided mandrel in here? Uh, you know, you do on the uh, on the A and C types. Okay. Um, so there's little little bit of that technology in there as well. Oh, this is although this product. Um, it's funny because that's always been a, a big seller for us from a technology perspective, but we kind of downplay it because we have these other interesting things in terms of the actual material that's being used and the Mongza here. So mm -hmm. the, the HD is kind of not as prominent, at least in terms of how we speak about this product per se. Okay. Um. Now, so we talked a little bit about the A type. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me what's different between the A and the B type. Sure. So... Um, probably designed in a way for similar type of players. Mm -hmm. um, the B type is more of a back-weighted um, type structure. So Heavy handle. Yes, exactly. So really designed uh, with the intent of being utilized I into heavier driver heads, mm -hmm. maybe 205 on up, mm -hmm. um, and or for people who uh, are interested in longer overall club builds. Okay. Um, so really designed to... And that, and that same type of player, um, slower to, to, to kind of mid-tempo uh, mm -hmm. um, type player w would be able to utilize this um, probably. So, so there's actually a little counterbalance technology. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, we, we've always been trying to define who it is if it's into counterbalance. Right. You know, and you get that one guy in 20 or so that... Yeah, absolutely. It's there, right? It, it, is, it is a different feel. Um, we're actually uh, being requested much more these days to, to build uh, counterbalance structures. And in fact, if you take a look at a lot of the more successful shafts on tour recently, mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are back weighted. Yeah, um, interesting. As well. So you, yeah. you get the weight, but it doesn't affect the speed in a sense. It's yes. Still, yeah. Yes. The exactly. weight's here as opposed to being spread out in the shaft. Exactly. But, uh, you know, it, it's 
We're not talking about big numbers here. No, 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 no. I mean, when you're talking yeah. about counterbalance, it's not like you're talking about, you know, yeah, here moving to it here. way up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're moving it an inch or two. Yeah. So tell me about tell me about the other type, the C type. Sure. Uh, the C type is is probably the profile of the three that's been most widely used for us on tour over the last mm -hmm. few months. Um, <clears throat> a little more stout in the tip section, mm -hmm. and a little softer in the in the butt section. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> pardon me. All three of the profiles actually are within a degree or within a range, what we would call kind of mid-launching and, and mid-spinning. Mm -hmm. um, so really what we're trying to do is take different swing types and, and people um, who like to feel different, sh different things about different shafts mm -hmm. and how they load shafts. So, for so the C-type is for that guy that comes in and goes, I can feel the tip. It's moving on me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, somebody that, so, so probably uh, faster swing speed, um, somebody that, that holds the angle, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that type of player is probably, generally speaking, going to yeah. really, really enjoy the, the C-type. Yeah. The smoother, uh, perhaps slower swing speed, either he's, he's A, a and B. B. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good fitting guy. Yeah, yeah well, we hope so. We yeah. hope so. Okay. Well, thanks for spending your time with us today. Absolutely. It was yeah. a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. Really enjoyed it. So this is Russ from the PGA Show.